Well, good morning. It's day 133 of our daily broadcast from Shore Hope Church for friends and family and those who join with us each day. God bless you. Good to see you. And uh, we're making progress. <laughs> Slow but sure. And uh, I hope you've uh, had a good night's rest. And now we face another day, um, another dreary day, hence being inside. But there we are. Never mind. Good to, good to see you this morning. Um, we're in Psalm 4 and uh, we've Seen Psalm 3 being David's morning prayer and Psalm 4 being David's evening prayer, linking it to the time when he um, fled Jerusalem because of Absalom's revolt and, uh, and what happened. So we're going to pick up from where we've left off and we're nearly at the end of Psalm 4, verse 7 today. Um, quite a remarkable verse, actually, and <laughs> the more I've looked into it. Two little psalms, and, you know, you think, have I not seen this before? <laughs> well, th there we are. You see, this is what happens when you uh, work through a, a, a psalm or a portion of scripture bit by bit, um, verse by verse even, and find God's uh, word is so rich, so full, um, and and really deals with our everyday lives and the situations that we face, um, particularly at the moment. Um, you know, when men's hearts are failing them for fear um, and anxiety, which is what David was experiencing, um, well, Psalm 4 is the answer. My goodness. Um, so we're, we're going to see it again today. Let's, let's read the psalm from uh, New International Version this morning. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. How long, O men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you uh, love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. In your anger do not sin when you are on your beds. Search your hearts and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. And then today's verse, you have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O Lord. Make me dwell in safety. Quite a, a remarkable psalm because, as we've seen already so far, uh, David starts off with his request, his prayer. His request was to for the Lord to bring relief from his distress because he was feeling encircled, encompassed about. He was under pressure, cornered, and uh, he he needed to be free. He needed to be free of that uh, of that distress, and then the rebuke that he he brought to those who would. Uh, revolted against being in revolt against him um how many you know how many just just overwhelming him um and for their for their times of um sorry not how many how long how many was how was the the third psalm how long that's right three how longs uh how long will they seek after false gods how long will they will they believe the lies how long will they follow their delusions um, and then the rebuttal and he says but the Lord has put his hand on his own he has separated me for the throne so I'm um, like Arnie I'm going to be back <laughs> I'll be back um, his but his faith was in God his trust was in God that the Lord had set him apart and then the psalm turns into his expression of relief and yesterday we saw uh, the, the, the strife that David was experiencing and, and the, the the feeling of complete of being overwhelmed, etc. Um, he, he just brought that word of, of encouragement to those who were with him and said, look, yeah, no doubt they were feeling, oh, have we done the right thing? Oh, have we backed the right horse, as we would say today? Well, maybe not, but anyway, you... you You've heard the expression, um, you know, are we are we on the right path here or should we have stayed and, and um, with Absalom? Um, there, there were no doubt there were doubts that were creeping into their minds and David just reassures them uh, and brings that, that word yesterday that we saw um, 
and he brings that prayer let the light of your of, of your face shine upon us O lord god smiles upon us okay the ironic blessing from numbers um you know it, it was such a, a powerful thing that rested on david and rested on his his followers and his friends um and then today here we, here we are now there's progress because once you know god's face is shining on you once you know that you've got god's smile on you uh, about what you're doing and the, the action you're taking um david's prayer was actually answered um before he he actually had relief from his circumstances so before the circumstances changed and here's the key for all of us before the circumstances changed god had changed david <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a powerful thought and one that we need to just uh, ponder on for a moment because we we might be praying earnestly over a situation that we need to see um a change um <laughs> and in that time and in all the distress and in all the challenge and in all the lies and, the, and the, the intrigue and all the stuff that's going on in the background David has come to a place where he has he himself has changed before the circumstances have changed so at the start of the psalm we've got this anxious David who who really um we would say maybe <laughs> that um that phrase beside himself he he, he just it it really is um too much I, I, you know we come to that breaking point and and maybe david was at that breaking point but the anxiety of it it's it's enough to to you know make you ill and that's exactly what anxiety does um if you if you stay in the place of ang ang anxiety you will make yourself physically ill uh, but it's spiritually not good for you either and so david has moved from a place of being anxious to now being in a place of assurance <laughs> it's completely turned and it's changed in the matter of six verses it's gone from being anxious to now being assured um and and so we'd have to say well we need to say we need to look at it and say well well what changed well, well, well <laughs> David, tell me, how did you do? How did you do that? How 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 did that happen? What what was it exactly that that changed in you? And it's actually there, staring us in the face. It's called joy. <laughs> ah, oh yeah, this joy. Uh, it, let's just read the verse again. You have filled my heart with greater joy so it's not just joy it's greater joy <laughs> greater joy because we know we know that joy in the lord is our strength so david had changed from being anxious to being assured and he was also now from his feelings of weakness and feelings of of um no doubt um questioning his own ability and questioning his his own stat, right standing and questioning all the mistakes and he's made in the past and and all those all those all those things that come inevitably to your mind and you have to deal with um from that place of of, of fear and despondency and distress and anxiety um he's now assured and and instead of feeling weak uh and incapable he's now feeling strong strong he's got a strength and, and and it's actually um oh, what did it say greater joy more it's a it's more joy more, more joy greater joy um <laughs> when you it, more joy than what well he gives you the the comparison greater joy than when the farmer brings in a bountiful harvest oh what you see you can imagine think of for a moment if you especially the farmers this year that they've sown the seed and uh, with such a ridiculously dry spring they're getting anxious they are getting really anxious and there was 
some fears about the, uh, the whether the harvest would fail this year because of how dry it had been through the early part of the spring, as we well know. <laughs> um, now things have changed, and the, you know we've had the rain, as we also know. But you can imagine things, uh, the anxiety of a farmer in having sown the seed, invested um, in in the field, and looking for uh, the, looking forward to the day when he would be able to reap a harvest. But it's not looking good. But it's it's looking serious. But there's times, you know, when when the weather is against him and. And so all the fears start to rise. Uh, you know, is he going to get a return on, on that? You know, is there going to be um, a famine? Is, is there going... There's lots of questions that start to... And he's anxiously watching his field, seeing the, the, the ground crack because it's so dry uh, and the, the, the crops starting to wilt and, and fade and fail. But... That recovers and and so wow! Can you imagine now, as we come into harvest time? As I found following combine harvester down the road the other day, <laughs> it's harvest time. Oh, that's right. Yes, it's mm. and wow! You know the relief. Ah, oh, wow! We did it, and hopefully there'll be a thank you, Lord, in there. Um, you know he he's got his return. He's got his profit. Um. But there's there's more to it than just the joy and sad. There's more to it than profit for the farmer. There's satisfaction. There's there's a sense of peace of mind that comes in as well, ah, because he's been so worried about whether his crop was going to fail. And then there's rest. His labour's done when the harvest has been brought in. Um, you know. <laughs> now. So we we can understand why David makes the comparison. But he's saying he's got greater joy than when the farmer brings in a bountiful harvest. And the harvest, <laughs> the, the, the farmer is pretty happy. He's very happy. He's full of joy um, because of the relief and the etc. that we've just mentioned. But David says he's got greater joy than that. Oh, and where is this greater joy? Notice it's in his heart. Now, in biblical language, when you read the word heart, you understand it's not the the physical pump in your chest. In the in the Bible, the, the heart means the center of the human spirit, from where springs um, emotions, thought, motivations, courage, which hopefully lead to action. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's where David is saying that, in my heart, not we point to our chest, but in my heart, in my spirit, <laughs> I'm a greater joy. Um, now, whether his face was showing the joy, it, maybe he was now. Um, he'd had the time of wailing, going up the Mount of Olives, um, when they were in mourning because of leaving Jerusalem, but that was in the you know morning prayer. And now, he, when the answer came at the top of the hill, remember with Hushai, his, his, um, his uh, personal advisor, go, and, go, and, go back to Absalom and, and frustrate his, his planning and his scheming. The answer came at the top of the hill. Now, we're talking about the evening prayer now, and things are, now that the, the joy's springing up, welling up from his heart. And oh, what word did I just use? Welling up. Yes, because that's scriptural. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4, and uh, we'll see how important Solomon places the importance of looking on looking after your heart um, and how he describes it. So Proverbs chapter 4, um, and he's from verse 20, come on, read it from verse 20. He says, my son, pay attention to what I say. Listen co closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body okay this is good yeah don't don't miss it above all else number one priority for you and for me in life day-to-day -day life above all else guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life 
So out of, the, out of David's heart sprang greater joy. Greater joy than the farmer experiences after all the waiting and longing and, um, and hoping and maybe praying, yes, that his harvest wouldn't fail. Now he's brought in the harvest. What relief, what joy. David says, greater joy than that is welling up within me. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. So in other words, those last four verses are telling you how to guard your heart. Okay? Um, and it's so important because out of your heart springs life. And out of your heart, David knew greater joy. <laughs> now, I found this. I just might help you. It's from a Dr. Redford Williams, uh, Duke's University Behavioral Medicine Research Center. Okay. And he says this, a hostile heart will kill you. Hmm. Some indicators of a hostile heart are impatience. Okay. Impatience with delays, okay, mistrust of co-workers, annoyance with the habits of family members or friends, and a persistent need to have the last word in arguments, okay, or to get even when wronged. Wow. That's very interesting. I'm going to read it again, okay. Some indicators of a hostile heart are impatience with delays, mistrust of co-workers, annoyance with the habits of family members or friends, and a persistent need to have the last word in arguments, or to get even when wronged. Mm -hmm. So if any of those things speak to you this morning, be aware, it's time to deal with it because... It's what actually will kill you. Yeah. Both physically as well as spiritually. Hmm. That's a hostile heart. But Solomon says, guard your heart. Okay. Above all else. Make it number one. Make it number one today. Guard your heart. Because out of your heart will spring life and greater joy. Even when you just come through or even when you're in the midst of anxiety and pressure and stress. Well, so much from just one verse. Isn't it good? <laughs> I hope you've been blessed with that this morning. And uh, have a look, Proverbs chapter 4, and from verse 20 to the end, there's only, what, six or seven verses, but I love the way Solomon then tells you how to guard your heart. Um, and I'd love to spend more time with it today, but time has gone how to guard your heart um and and it's big why because it's the wellspring of life okay so there we go god bless you have a good day now don't forget this evening at uh, seven o'clock we have the bible study on the life of king david and i'll give you the the zoom id number that you need is eight one two nine five one three five nine seven zero. so if you can join with us tonight on zoom uh using that number i'll give it again 812-9513-5970 and uh, we, we'll have a good time together um, on God's word um, as we look at the life of King David. Actually as well, just as a little reminder, you can go to Shore Hope Church website, surehopechurch.co.uk. <laughs> I should say that again really, shouldn't I? surehopechurch.co.uk and you will find uh, that um, the Bible studies are actually uh, recorded on there as well. So um, be blessed, have a good day, and let's just pray and give God thanks for that greater joy, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the greater joy that wells up within us from our hearts. When we trust in you, when we look to you, we thank you, Lord, that you turn our anxiety into assurance. As we, we trust you, that you have all things working together for good to them that love you and are called according to your purpose. We thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon us and uh, that we know that in you, 
you will lead us in the right paths as we trust you. Thank you, Lord, that, that we can sometimes feel surrounded and compassed about and, and feel the distress and the discomfort of such horrible times. Yet today we can we can rejoice and know your strength because of the greater joy that's within our hearts. Help us, Lord, today to be able to express that and share it with others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great day and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.